So you're thinking about getting back into GPU mining, but you're not sure which equipment to get. After all, there's a lot of new cards. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you three ways that you can use data to find out which GPU is best for you. Welcome back, my name is Seth Estrada, and if you didn't read that disclaimer card, go back, pause the video, and read it. None of this constitutes financial advice, so do your own research, don't get wrecked. Without further ado, let's jump into the meat and potatoes. This is the GPU efficiency spreadsheet that I debuted a little over a year ago and talked about several cards, but mostly highlighted one that most people didn't expect, which was the Frontier Edition Vega card. 16 gigs of HBM2 memory. It was unheard of at the time. Not a workstation card, though it is used in the workstation class, and AMD sold it as a workstation card until my video came out, and then they changed the ad copy to talk about it like a blockchain mining part. So I'm flattered, but at the same time, you can see the power of data. You can see the power of not just data, let me, let me be more clear, interpretation. Let me show you how this thing is laid out. Far left is the model of the card being discussed. Right next to it is the average price at retail right now. Now to be clear, this is not the price that you'll find if you use deal sites or if you buy privately or if you have a friend that has whatever, uh, five dozen of this model card. You're probably going to get a better price there. But this is Amazon and eBay today. If you want it shipped today, making payment today, so that it gets to you within 72 hours. These prices are not typical of miners who are seeking the best deal. Again, so you've been warned. Next to that is the average power consumption of this card, and that's derived by these two columns here, by a manually placed minimum power consumption, and this is observable based on what to mine numbers and then community contributed numbers, people saying, hey, I've been able to get as low as 70 watts, 65 watts even on my RX 470 8 gig card or a mining edition 470 8 4 gig card. And then the max numbers are pretty much based on published specs from the manufacturer. And then the average is formulated over here using a calculation in the spreadsheet. Next to that, there are a bunch of hashing algorithms, and then there are a bunch that are hidden. You see these little arrows right here. If you expand those, we'll see a bunch of other algorithms, but they've just kind of lost relevance. Things like Skunk Hash, not really practical on a GPU. Pascal, not really practical on a GPU. However, you see, we've got plenty of options for GPU still. Below that, you'll see an icon of the most frequently mined coin on that algorithm. ProgPow, for example, has the highest net hash on Bitcoin interest. However, there are other coins coming up that use ProgPow, and the Ethereum Foundation or the Ethereum developers have talked openly about adopting ProgPow. We just don't know when that's going to happen. Same with Phi2. It's pretty much just Spider Coin at this point. And then X21S, mostly Rito Coin. And then with Kukaru and Kuka2, C29 and C31, respectively. Basically, it's just Grin, right? There could be other coins that are using it, could be other coins that have it on the roadmap. But let's be real, most miners are going to mine these coins because they have enough daily liquidity to be able to flip your mining profits into a form that you can then pay bills with and then hang on to those profits, maybe in that coin or in some other coin that you prefer, like Bitcoin or Monero or something, for example, something that you believe is a longer term hold. Bitcoin Diamond, again, right here, may fall off of this list in the near future as GPU dominance is kind of falling by the wayside with some of these algorithms. Are GPUs dead? Far from it, and I'm gonna prove it to you. Okay, so that's this side of the spreadsheet. It's the data side. Down on the bottom, there are three tabs. The data tab is locked. The bang for the buck tab is locked. The efficiency per watt tab is locked. Why? Because this is my spreadsheet. If you want this spreadsheet for yourself and you wanna start doing customizations, as I show you how to use this or follow along, mine your dot biz slash blog. And you can find the charts on the front page. So it is we're rapidly adding content, including the official HiveOS complete training in English, which was co-written by the lead developer of HiveOS and sanctioned by HiveOS 
directly. You'll be a pro at HiveOS in no time, and you'll also get 10 bucks free credit by using the referral code that we give you, as opposed to anybody else in the community just trying to earn money. I no longer earn money from that. Now you know where to find it. When you want to get this for yourself, simply click on File, make a copy, and if you're logged into Google, this will show up in your Google Drive, and you can then make any customization that you want there. If you see a problem with this community-oriented spreadsheet, simply click on that field, and then as you right-click, you can add a comment. That plus symbol right there will allow you to add a comment so you can help others in the community. Remember, sharing is caring. I went through the pains of creating this spreadsheet in the first place for the benefit of the community. Maybe you can chip in too. You figure out what is in your best interest, but I think that when we work together, we mine more profitably. That's the data tab in a nutshell. I'm gonna hop over to Bang for the Buck and show you how to use this thing. This is a representation of all the data from the data tab, but now in a ratio of how many dollars it takes to achieve one hash of a given algorithm. Over here on ethash, for example, or dagger Hashimoto, I'm gonna sort A to Z and it shows us that the cheapest way to achieve one mega hash on Ethereum or Ethereum Classic or what have you is by getting a Polaris card from AMD, the RX 580 or 480 8 gig models. To be clear, I no longer list the RX 580 4 gig edition. Pretty much the only relevant 4 gig edition of the Polaris cards is now the mining edition. So the 470 mining edition. So that's still on the list. But then in the top five is P104 by NVIDIA, right? This is a mining edition, essentially the GTX 1070 equivalent but it's got GDDR5X memory. It is a top, top performer, and it's really inexpensive right now at under $300. Now, to, again, to be clear, this is not the price that you'd find if you're really scouring for a deal, but if you needed to have a lot of them shipped to you today, meaning like multiples, five, 10, or multiple boxes of 20 or whatever, you could get them at this price and know that they'd be en route to you without any delays. Top five though is basically Polaris and then the one oddball NVIDIA mining edition card as far as getting cheap net hash. Let's go over to the efficiency per watt tab though and see what the rest of the story is. Here on the efficiency per watt tab, what this is gonna do is show us a ratio of how many hashes we get for each watt. And in this case, I'm gonna sort Z to A. Again, this is gonna show me the highest number. On bang for the buck, I wanna pay just a little bit, right? But on efficiency per watt, I want every watt to give me a lot of hash rate. Makes sense, right? So here at the top of the list is P104, what? And then P102 which is sort of like the GTX 1080 slash 1080 Ti equivalent. Efficiency though, you shouldn't be surprised to see Radeon 7 in the top five. Radeon 7 hit the market with a bang and now it's finally back under $700, not by much, but it's under $700 and it hashes at nearly 80 to 90 mega hashes per second, though conservatively, I put in 78. I'm going to go back to the data tab and kind of explain why I was so conservative with these numbers. We have old cards like the Graphics Core Next 2 and 3 edition cards. R9 280X, for example, may be capable of doing more than 11 mega hashes per second on Ethereum. However, it does so at a very high power consumption and with mixed results. People who still have these old cards kind of on average get 11 mega hashes per second. And then jumping down to the NVIDIA camp, looking at the GTX 1080 Ti, a lot of people are able to achieve, a lot of miners are able to achieve 55 or in some cases 56 plus mega hashes per second using the ETH largement pill. However, the average is a little lower than that. It's a little lower than 50 mega hashes. So like 48, 49-ish. I've heard some people say they just camp out at 44 mega hashes per second, keep the power consumption really low, and really, really focus on efficiency over that really powerful net hash. So I put an average of 49. I brought these hash rates down, and then also brought the average power consumption down by bringing a lower minimum power consumption based on real world data contributed by community members. So just so you know, some of these hash rates are not like the rock star hash rates you'll see people bragging about in private forums or on Reddit or whatever else. Again, you know you can take that stuff with a grain of salt because miners are a bit like fishermen, right? It's like, I caught one this big and then all of a sudden it's out of control. My Radeon 7 is hashing Monero at four kilohash. Eh, Pixar didn't happen. So efficiency per watt, this is kind of tempered by having ultra high hash rates that you see people bragging about. And again, if you want to do some customizations for yourself, go for it. You can always make a copy and figure that out on your own. Sorting for the highest amount of hashes per watt 
We got P104, P102, Radeon 7, P106, and then GTX 1080 Ti. We should expect this, right? Based on these mining edition cards released by Nvidia, still providing phenomenal value. And then the GTX 1080 Ti having the 8th large mint pill, we should expect that. Now, again, Radeon 7 being such a low power consumption, high performer, it really should show up in top five categories pretty frequently on this tab, efficiency per watt. But when we compare that to bang for the buck, the price per mega hash, it doesn't always win, oddly enough, because it's still almost $700. So let's look through all of these tabs, all the coins, and I'll do this as fast as I can. <laughs> let you know my observations, my gut level response. This is essentially the first time I've really gone through this data with you. I put it on the data tab, but I haven't really interpreted it yet. And I want you to see that this is kind of how I would read it. Top five for Ethereum is mostly team green. Let's look at Monero though. And I think we pretty much know what to expect here. So we've got Radeon 7 at the top of the stack. It actually is the top performer for Monero when it comes to hash per watt. And then Vega 56, Vega 64, and Vega FE again, FTWs. So I'm not surprised, right? I wasn't surprised last year when I saw that Vega FE was going to be a top performer. Is it hard to work with? Yes. Is driver support still kind of an intermittent issue for users of this card? Yes, of course. We've got user stories coming out left and right of people saying like, ah, it was a bit of a headache, but they had a competitive first mover advantage by being the first to adopt and then uh, adapt and overcome some of these challenges. Mining, the profit happens in the margins and the profit happens in problem solving. Getting into early hardware and being the first to make it work. That's part of the reason you got me go going into FPGAs and talking about overcoming problems with things that are not just appliances, but components. It's worth the headache to be the front runner next quarter, the quarter following that next year, right? Being a leader in this space. Top five, I'm not surprised it's primarily Team Red, but we still have P104 that is extremely efficient. That said, I think that's bogus. It does not hash 882. You know what? We've got an error in the spreadsheet, and it's part of the reason that you've got to do your own research. You've got to make sure that you customize your calculations for your own goals. But I think I've got an error here. I don't believe we're getting 882 hashes per second of Monero. I think we're getting somewhere closer to the 1070. So let's just bring that back in line with the 1070 core, call it exactly the same as the 1070. And let's go back to efficiency per watt and let's sort again. Writing is rewriting. I know I got P106 in the top five. I don't think that's legit either. I think that's gonna be closer to GTX 1060. And I think the error here comes from me only revising certain numbers. Let's talk about why I chose to go with Kryptonite R as opposed to Kryptonite Fast, Kryptonite Heavy, Kryptonite Arto, Kryptonite Saber, Kryptonite Reverse Walls, Kryptonite Turtle. I think I'm answering the question, aren't I? This spreadsheet would grow out of control with just Kryptonite variants if I chose to go get every single data point for every single Kryptonote coin. So Kryptonite R is gonna be what we use moving forward. If Monero forks to random X as their mining algorithm, their proof of work algorithm, then perhaps I'll add that, but I'm not sure since it's gonna be very CPU oriented. So maybe not, maybe we'll choose some other sort of baseline crypto night algorithm as the one that's listed. And then you can derive relative performance from there because the efficiencies are gonna be pretty much the same and the value for the money is gonna be pretty much the same when it comes to any variant of crypto night. And generally speaking, you know, spoiler alert, it's gonna be Radeon 7 and then Vega cards. I think we already knew that. Here on Team Green, we don't normally expect anything to be a big outlier on Kryptonite. So I'm gonna bring that back in line with the GTX 1060 numbers. And then let me just double check to make sure that we don't have any other outliers here that are maybe inappropriate. GTX 1080 Ti is gonna do about 750 hashes on Kryptonite, but we do expect that. And that is in line, I think, with some real world numbers. And seeing that P102 does maybe between, between what a GTX 1080 does and a GTX 1080 Ti does, I think is more realistic. So let's call that good. Jump back to efficiency per watt and sort one more time Z to Hey, now we see something that resembles more like our real world experience, all team red, basically for the top 10, top nine there. And then P102 barely coming in before you get uh, entrance like the graphics core next two and three edition cards by AMD, right? So R9390X, top performer, R9380, top performer but it really shouldn't be any more efficient than more modern offerings from NVIDIA. 
And I've seen that hold true in the real world, including workstation class cards by Nvidia, seeing them be just a little bit more efficient than some of the older cards by AMD. Again, take this all with a grain of salt and figure out what the best goals are for you professionally either as an individual miner or maybe as a group with friends. Let's look at Monero for bang for the buck. And I think, again, we're gonna see something sorting A to Z. We wanna see how little we'll pay Vega 56 all day, baby. When Radeon 7 was announced and launched, Vega 56 had an official price drop down to $300. That makes Vega 56 a phenomenal value for the money. Look at the nearest neighbor, 17 cents per hash. And then the nearest neighbor is five cents more. The difference is night and day. From here, let's look at Zhash. And uh, we'll sort again, A to Z. And it's Team Green all the way, except for this oddball. What's this little sticking out like a sore thumb? R9 Fury? What the heck? What's that all about? Let's look at efficiency per watt and see if that holds over on Z hash. Nope, mostly all Team Green, but the R9 Fury is way down there. But why did it show up on Bang for the Buck? Let's look at the data tab, and I think this is not a mistake. Here on R9 Fury, that hash rate is pretty impressive. Compare that to say Vega 56 or Vega 64. Why would R9 Fury hash that high? Well, if you're new to GPU mining or GPUs in general, R9 Fury was one of the first consumer oriented cards to have high bandwidth memory, HBM, generation one. Equihash being a fairly memory bound algorithm on AMD performs a bit better with higher bandwidth memory. Of course, here you're gonna see that figure of 30 hashes per second or souls per second on R9 295X2, but that's a dual core GPU. So you kind of expect it to double the performance of its nearest neighbor, the R9 290 or the R9 380, be close to those figures. But R9 Fury is a single core AMD card, does that by having just more performant memory. I think that's why we're seeing that bang for the buck, seeing it right there in the number two spot. But the first time I saw that, as I was just putting this data in, I was like, wait, is that hash rate right? And so again, kind of going through this, I'm not super shocked. P102, top performer, GTX 1080 Ti, still a phenomenal value and really high performer. I've seen 1080 Ti's do over, uh, uh, back when we were mining Zcash on the 1080 Ti, seeing them do over four and five, almost six, souls per joule and seeing people just really tune them for efficiency. They can really be made quite efficient. I'm not surprised to see that be the case on Zhash and on variants of Equihash. P104, GTX 1060 and 1070 round off the top five. No RTX parts to be found. Think about that. RTX probably should be showing up in the top five and top 10 more frequently, right? Let's look over here at Bang for the Buck and it does show up here, but not until we get out of the top five. Um, you see 1660 parts and then 2060 parts in the top 10, but really no other RTX parts in the top 10. Some of the newer cards do make sense to buy now in terms of bang for the buck. But again, that's up to you to figure out what's your strategy, right? Let's sort now while we're on this view, bang for the buck. Let's go with Lira 2 RE version 3, which is pretty much just Vertcoin. What? AMD? I don't think many people expect to see that, but Polaris, 580, 480, 570, 470, and then the Mining Edition, they're right there in the top six, with GTX 1660 kind of being the oddball from Nvidia showing up, and then Vega 56 and P104 also in the running in the top 10. These are really good value cards, right? So I think we see that repeatedly, that some of these cards like P104 and like Vega 56 are gonna keep popping up because they're phenomenal value. So bang for the buck, they're gonna keep trying to get our money. And then efficiency per watt, see what the story is there. Z to A, nope, top five, entirely owned by Nvidia. And we've got P102, we've got 2080 Ti making a top five, 2060, 2070, and then 1080. That's a bit of a shock, right? So the higher performance parts from NVIDIA tend to be also more efficient on Lyra 2 RE version 3. Something to think about there. Move over to X16R, and there are many coins that use X16R, of course, but the most popular being RVN, right? Raven was the first to debut this proof of work algorithm. Of course, we'd expect for it to be still the highest net hash. P102, 2080 Ti, 2060, however, coming in third, and I think we'll see that, I think, more than once. 1080 Ti, 2070. And then bang for the buck, 1660, P102 again, and then 2060 again. In fact, 2060 makes that number three spot on both 
lists. So it's both the highest efficiency per watt on X16R and also the best bang for the buck. We also see 2070 parts, making it into the top 10 on both lists. Don't discount the 2060 and the 2070, at least for mining, as being highly efficient and performance-oriented mining parts. Did NVIDIA intend for you to mine on them? I don't think so, but they're here, right? They're here and they're what's hot for gaming. But let's sort the sheet Z to A here on Phi 2. Now, it's entirely Team Green that pretty much owns this. Let's talk about that by going over to the data tab. You can see that for Phi 2, there's just no publicly available data. It could just be there's not a good miner. I haven't looked into Phi 2 because I have a significant number of AMD cards and because Spider has not been my top pick for mining lately. However, it's still on What's a Mine. It's still on CoinCalculators.io and it's still on several other forums, right? There are there are fans of this coin and it does have a community that justifies maybe mining it if you think it's the right choice for you. On AMD, kind of a no-go. It's kind of a ghost. Maybe there's a shadow mining inventory or net hash somewhere on AMD and somebody's figured it out, but I can't see it. So if you know, let me know down in the comments. Are you mining Phi 2 on AMD? And to be clear also, let me show you the, the formula bar for this. It's not actually zero, otherwise I'd get a divide error on the calculations on the other tabs. It's actually 0 0.00000001. It's like, yeah, anyway, it's like a Satoshi. It's like a, yeah, tiny, tiny atomic value. But if I give it a zero, like full zero, it'll have a divide by zero error. Ugh, spreadsheets, what are you gonna do? Gotta work with limitations. That's why only NVIDIA shows up in the efficiency per watt. But you got 2080 Ti, P102, 2060, 2070, P106. So mining edition parts and then the newer RTX parts. Top that list for Phi 2. Bang for the buck. I think I wouldn't, I don't know that I'd go buy a card explicitly just for Phi 2 mining. But if you were going to, looks like 1660, P104, 2060, and 1660 Ti are good bets, as well as P106. So mining edition parts and then newer sort of value oriented parts like 1660 or 2060. These are known to be highly efficient parts. The GTX 1060 6 gig is still a phenomenal performer in mining. And I said this over a year ago, and it just really held its value and held its place in efficiency per watt, right? Uh, hash rate per watt in the mining space. It's just, it just keeps on chugging along. Not shocked to see that. Prog Pow, this is supposed to be the final battleground for GPUs, where it just exposes the raw performance of each architecture. What does that mean in terms of bang for the buck? Some GPUs might still be priced better. And Vega 56 is here at the top of the list. Same with Polaris Edition cards, right? 580, 480, 8 gig, Vega 64, and again, RTX 2060, phenomenal performer for the money, and 1660 as well. So there are some new parts from NVIDIA. Who knows? It might be the right choice for you to look at these parts and consider getting something slightly newer, but not top of the line. Consider that when looking at a, a card for Prog Pow. Let's look for our efficiencies here. Predominantly NVIDIA. There is some accusation of the IFDFLs team that they are tuning for NVIDIA. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true, because the last I, I saw from any public posts of the IFDF else team, they're actually not doing any work on it at all. So if there is OpenCL optimization to be done or any kind of AMD optimization to be done at all, it's likely going to have to be done by either the Ethereum developers or by a third party that can jump in to understand the architecture differences as well as the cryptographic implications of making changes to this proof of work algorithm. That was some word soup. Let me get a little closer and talk to you more about that. What I mean is, this is a really tricky proof of work algorithm that more than one really intelligent developer has looked at and kind of said, huh, testing this is gonna be a headache and implementing this might be a headache and it looks like it's kind of tuned for NVIDIA and the data proves it. Don't know what I make of that. What do you make of it? Tell me down in the comments. Radeon 7 makes the list on the efficiency per watt, but that's to be expected because it's a seven nanometer part. It's highly efficient for pretty much every algorithm that it can do. ProgPow is no exception. MTPs, Merkle tree proofs. Again, we know this is basically just Z coin today, though it is a pretty relevant proof of work algorithm. I think it'll be interesting to see which other coins adopt Merkle tree proofs down the line. NVIDIA is known to just kick butt at this algorithm. There are some caveats though. You'll notice that way down here at the bottom of the stack, we've got a bunch of zeros, including some team green parts. P106, P104, P102. Why is that? 
because Merkle Tree proofs, at least at a certain point, required a minimum of six gigabytes of addressable memory on that card. P104, there are some versions of P104 that can be unlocked to have eight, but P102, five gigs. Maybe you can find some that can be unlocked to the full 11 gigs. Maybe. P106, maybe you can find some P106 that has six gigs, but you know, not everybody does. Not everybody has that or uh, to be used. And I'm just not finding just not finding numbers that justifies the use of these mining edition cards on Merkle Tree proofs. So, sorry. Same is true of the RX 470 mining edition card from AMD, as well as a bunch of the older parts from AMD. All the R9 cards are pretty much out of the running, except for the R9 259 295X2. Wow, talking myself silly, talking myself dizzy. Maybe I need to stop and have a have a sip of you know these disgusting habits that I have. Don't recommend them. The numbers are laid out the way they are because there are some limitations with certain architectures that will keep you from being able to hash at all. It's a non-starter. So let's look over at Bang for the Buck. Of course, you can see again some of these same cards way down at the bottom. Top of the stack though, 1660 and 1660 Ti, 2060, 2070, and then GTX 1066 gig in the top five. Unbelievable that the 1066 gig is still such an incredible value. But that the 2060 kind of came out of left field where a lot of people were saying, I need the 2080, I need the 2080 Ti, I need to be really, really competitive. I said the same thing last year. 1080 Ti was not necessarily the best value for mining, and 2080 Ti may also not necessarily be the best value for mining. I think you're gonna find that value elsewhere. 1660 looks good, so does 2060. X25X. This is a variant kind of built on the, the back of X16R, right? Standing on the shoulders of the Ravencoin team. Look at the bang for the buck. <laughs> R9 Fury, you're drunk, go home. Vega 56, Vega 64, P104, and then Vega FE. Unbelievable. Vega is just kicking butt over here on these multi-algo cycles in terms of bang for the buck. And so looking at the data, we've got some data from what to mine that I think validates that, but then also some derivative data, mostly data from what to mine though. These aren't super high hash rates, but you look at Vega FE and it's really not all that much lower than an RTX part. And RTX 2080, I'm sorry, RTX 2080 is double the price of Vega 56, more than double the price of a Vega 56. And you've got such close hash rates, it's hard to justify the cost of an RTX part if you're looking at mining Cinovate, right? formerly Suka. But if you're looking at mining Cinovate, I don't know. It's gonna be hard to justify anything other than an AMD part based on this top five listing and the rest of the, tops, the top 10 being predominantly Team Red. Let's look at efficiency per watt though. You might be able to get more profit out of Team Green. There you go, top five or P102. 1080 Ti, 2080 Ti, 1080, and then 2060. Yeah! 2060 coming in the top five. I'm seeing a pattern here. I don't know about you. 2070, not far behind it. P106, P104, not behind, not far behind those. And then Radeon 7, also a highly efficient performer, but again, really high prices for some of these parts. Not so for the 2060 getting closer to the three bill mark, kind of more approachable, right? Kind of more affordable and might retain some resale value. I don't know. You you make your own choices. I'm not gonna tell you how to live, but sorting for X21S again, Nvidia, just kicking butt taking names over here, a bit like how we saw with X16R. Most of that is because on the data tab, I've got to admit that right here, some of these numbers are derived from the X16R numbers. And I kept seeing enough parity between the data points that I did have from both the Rito coin community as well as my own personal hash rate tests. And I saw that there was a bit of a ratio between X16R and X21S that I could, with pretty high confidence, just start to put in a fixed ratio between the two and derive the hash rate for X21S. So you're gonna see that on efficiency per watt, it looks very similar to X16R, but now you know why I've got the data laid out the way that I do. So bang for the buck, let's look at X21S again, will also look very similar to X16R. 1660, 6, B, 6 gig, P102, 1660 Ti, and RTX 2060 again. I really do think that I'm convincing myself to get a, an RTX 2060 right now. I think this is happening in this video. I didn't expect to like convince myself to get an RTX 2060 or 2070 part for gaming, but I might do that as a gaming card, as a sort of like informal uh, part-time mining part and uh, put it on the gaming rig over here. Hopefully I don't talk myself into it too much because my wife will be like, what? You spent personal money on mining? All right, bang for the buck, I did it exactly backwards. Let's go A to Z and top of the list on C29, 
NVIDIA parts. This is not a surprise. We saw this when Grin launched, but 1660 and the TI 1060, 2060, 2070. Wow. These are the best value cards still, right? 1660, 2060, 1060. I think the commercial industrial miners, they've kind of been able to tell for a long time the 1660, I mean, it's a favorite part, right? In industrial mining, in large scale mining, the 16, uh, the 1060 as well as the RX 470, with good reason, you're seeing it here, right? The value is not comparable to anything else, pretty much. But then looking at uh, the bottom of the list, stuff that can actually still hash it, you've got things like the older parts, but something that's relatively new, you're gonna spend almost three times as much per hash on a GTX 1080 Ti to be able to mine Grin well versus say like a 1060 or a 2060. I don't know. I just, I don't think it's worth going for the more expensive parts. And then efficiency, yeah, you do have higher hashing numbers on some of those parts, but here's the 2060 in the top 10. I think that's validated. And in the top five, top 10, you have all the same parts that were the best bang for the buck on the efficiency side as well for C29. C31, looking at efficiency, we're going to see a very different story here because C31 is more tricky to mine, right? So C31, we've got 2080 Ti and 1080 Ti top of the stack because they are top performers. So of course, they're going to do well. Beyond that, C31 was originally conceived of as a mining algorithm that required 11 gigs RAM. You had 12 gig parts like workstation class cards from AMD, such as the S9100 passively cooled server part that has 12 gigs of RAM on it, and so it's possible to mine C31 on it, but the hash rate was really low. The performance was really, really low, even with that 12 gigs of onboard VRAM really does best on the 2080 Ti and the 1080 Ti. This is not a secret, but Radeon 7, 16 gigs RAM, totally works and it is still in the top five. That said, the 1080 Ti is twice as efficient. Bang for the buck on C31. Ooh, very different story. And this is where we have to really pay attention to all of the data, right? And interpret it correctly. Guys, data is nothing without interpretation. I'm gonna say it again and slowly. I don't care if you feel lectured. Data is nothing without interpretation. If every time you see that your daily profit isn't as high as you like, you, you pack up the ball and you go home, you're going to lose because you need more interpretation, not just more data. You need to educate yourself and find the interpretation of the data. There's more, more to the story. All right, so C31, Vega 56, Vega 64, and then Polaris cards, not the mining edition parts, but 580, 480. Why is that in the top spots? Well, there are some memory requirements to mine C31. There are some NVIDIA parts that don't meet it. Only a couple of parts here that actually do it. Not even P102 does it because it requires gigs of RAM. Maybe you can do it on four gig parts, but here's a caveat. They need to be four gig AMD parts. I have not seen four gig cards on NVIDIA do this successfully. If you have better data than I do, by all means, make a comment here on this spreadsheet so I can correct this data and we can communicate the truth to the community and let them know there's a glimmer of hope for them. But it's primarily 1080 Ti, 2080 Ti on Team Green. But on the AMD side, there are a lot of cards that can mine C31 based on work done, I believe, to G Miner that allowed for smaller than 11 gig cards to mine. But mostly AMD cards were able to do so successfully. So looking back at the efficiency per watt, yes, of course, 2080 Ti, but then you have near neighbors here on Team Red. And bang for the buck, you got the top five dominated by AMD. Even if you're mining Grin C31, you're gonna scale up faster and get better hash rate faster. We looked at that efficiency tab and 2080 Ti is twice as efficient as its nearest neighbor, right? But its nearest neighbor being Radeon and then and then Vega cards, you can buy two of them for the same price. It doesn't matter that it's twice as efficient, you're going to get your money's worth in terms of raw like net profit by scaling up on AMD depending on what size scale you want to achieve. So you figure it out. What do you value most? Do you want scale? Do you want raw profit? Do you want higher net profit through scale? Do you want higher net profit by mining for a certain time and doing something else with these cards? You've got to answer that question for yourself. Beam sorting A to Z for the bang for the buck. We got P104, woohoo! P104 kicking butt, taking names. Go P104, I'm a huge fan. But then R9 Fury again, just keeps showing up. Why? Again, because it's a derivative of Equihash. You remember that Z hash calculation? Calculation. The same holds true for Beam and BCD. It's a crazy little card. It can still do a lot. Is it super efficient for Ethereum mining? No. Do I even have numbers on Monero mining for the R9 Fury? No. The newer Kryptonite R numbers, I'm not finding them. If you have some, by all means, make a comment. Let me know. Let's throw out R9 Fury and let's look at the others and look at the top six instead. 
So on top six, we've got GTX 1070, we've got P102, 2060, 1660, and P104. So mining dish parts, and then XX60 parts, let's say, right? 2060, 1660, etc. This is kind of as it should be. Mining edition cards should still pretty much hold their own in this space. Now versus FPGAs, I don't know, we'll see. In the near future, I think we're gonna get a shock. Beam, let's take a look and sort Z to A for the efficiency per watt. NVIDIA smokes the competition, smokes it. Right, let's look at the worst NVIDIA card here, the 1660, and then look at the best AMD card. We got the Radeon 7, 26% improvement on the 1660 at less than half the cost. Now top of the list is gonna go to our P102, 1080 Ti, 2080 Ti, 2070, and 2060. Again, highly efficient parts. They're known to be some of the most efficient parts. And then BCD, guys, we're gonna see almost the exact same story right here on BCD. Slight reordering in the list, but not much. Mining edition parts like the P102, P104 do really well. And then the 2080 and 1080 Ti's do quite well also for efficiency per watt. Bang for the buck though. Yep, R9 Fury turning up like a bad penny. And then 1660 and 1660 Ti parts as well as 2060 parts. Okay guys, this is meant to be a starting point for you. Did I miss something? Have I gotten something wrong? Do me a favor and take a look at this data tab. Do you have some suggestions for me? If you do, go ahead and right click there and then make a comment about something that you've been able to achieve by way of hash rate or maybe by way of power consumption. Again, with some of these cards, like my edition cards, pretty much just got the manufacturer's spec to go off of, which is not always perfect. Sometimes it's there's only a TDP listing, so I kind of have to make a, a best guess on the maximum power consumption, and of course that can throw off the average. Am I perfect? No. Do I have perfect data? No. Do I have perfect interpretation? No. But we have a really good data set here to start with. I put it to you. Where have I missed something? Do I have a blind spot? Let me know in the comments of the document itself so I can improve it. Thank you for watching the video to this point. Thank you for hitting that bell icon after you click subscribe so you're notified when new videos come out. You're the reason I make this media. I love your face and I will see you in the next one.